This video is to show you the basics of how to process your orders once you start getting orders coming into your new website. Um, this is your dashboard. I've, I've made another video about how to move things around on your dashboard and customize your dashboard. So if you haven't seen that yet, then go and watch that. But just briefly, you can click on oops, you can click on screen options and then you can tick on um, WooCommerce recent orders so that it will add that to your dashboard. Um, you can then move things around on your dashboard by um, clicking on the heading and dragging them around so that you can actually put what you want at the top so that when you log into your site you will see exactly what you need to know immediately. Um, as you can see with this site, this is quite a new site, it was only launched um, yesterday, it's now the 1st of March and it was launched on the 28th of February and um, this person's already got about five orders which is really cool. So um, this last order was one that, you know, the last one is always at the top, the last one is one that I placed and so I'm going to use that as an example to show you details of the order because I don't really want to reveal the contact details of this person's customers. Um, so Assuming that you've got this on your dashboard, you can go directly to the order simply by clicking on the date here. Um, you will see that they've got a status of pending and, and one of them was cancelled, but I'll explain those statuses in a minute. But basically if it says, if it's in red, you're going to need to do something about it. Okay. The other way that you can see a list of all your orders is to go to WooCommerce and then click on orders under that. Now, when I edit this video before I send it out publicly, I'm going to be blurring out the contact details of the actual real life customers that are on this site. Um, so if you're wondering why things are blurry, that's why, okay, it's because I don't want to give away their contact details. Um, for each of the um, orders you will see the status here which in most of these cases is pending. Now pending means that it's a brand new order and nothing has been done with it yet so you haven't actually done any processing on it at all. The other kinds of statuses that you can have the, the main ones are processing and completed. So processing means yes you've started working on it and completed means it's finished and you've sent the stuff off. Now this if you've got one of my older style sites that's exactly the same okay it goes pending processing completed. There are a few other statuses available the same as with the old sites but we'll come to those in a minute. Now if you have um, already seen this and you want a really quick way to change it to processing you can just click on this button here and it will change the status to processing. Um, what happens when you actually change the status to processing is it sends out an email to the customer to say you know thank you very much your order is now being processed. Um, if you have sent it and you want a really quick way to just change it to completed you can just click on this button and it will say completed. Okay so um, and again an email will be sent automatically to your customer to say thank you very much your you know your order has been completed. Now to see the details of the order you click on the little I which is for view so let's just click on that and see what sort of details we can get. Okay so <clears throat> excuse me the um, the first thing here we've got the status now just click on the status here so we've got pending failed on hold processing completed refunded and cancelled so you know you can probably work out when you would use each of those. Um, failed is probably the equivalent of the declined from the the old system so you know some uh, the payment has failed in some way. Um, at the moment the way I've got this particular site set up the only payment method available is PayPal and I haven't got it set up so that PayPal feeds back to this system to tell it that yes we've received the payment. So um, at, at this stage I'm not sure what will happen when I do that but you know just bear with me there's still early days. Um, if that is something that you're going to need so say for example if you're doing downloadable products and you want them to be able to download immediately then that's something that you know we'll discuss and we'll look into how we go about doing that. But basically at the moment um, the status is pending. Now the other thing that I'm not sure about at this stage is that this particular um, person who owns this website didn't receive an email to say that they'd got a new order. 
Um, I need to look into that as to why that happened. They would have received an order from PayPal if the customer had gone through and actually paid in PayPal. So you will still get an email from PayPal or from Mal's if we're using the credit card, um, using a credit card system. So you will get some sort of email to say that you've got an order. But it's still a good idea to log into your website every now and then and just see. Because sometimes emails can go missing, as you know, they might have got you know tangled up in your junk and stuff like that. So just log in and have a look on your dashboard, have a look on the WooCommerce orders screen and see whether you've got any orders. So let's assume that uh, we're happy to send off this order. So we just can look down here. You can see here that this is what they've ordered. Um, I'm, I'm at, this is actually supposedly me. Um, I've ordered, um, you know, one thing called a thinking cap. Now, you can actually adjust the order quite a lot here. So you can change the quantity. You can change the price. You can change all this information. Um, so, you know, you can delete the item, you can view the product, there's lots of things you can do. You can even add items in here. Now, one reason why you might want to do that is because the customer might ring you up and say, oh, look, I really wanted two of them. So you can actually adjust a lot of the details of this, um, you know, of this order. You can also, over here, you can adjust the shipping. Now, in the case of this particular website, we do have shipping calculations in here. But if you're not taking PayPal, if you're just using your credit card, uh, credit, so your merchant facility, so people can pay you by credit card, one thing we can do is we can say shipping will be added at cost. And so when you get an order in, you work out what the shipping price is going to be, and then you can actually add that on. And you can put that in here and update. You click on the save order up here to update it. And then that will actually be included in any emails and things that go out to this customer so they can see right on their, their order what, you know, how much the shipping was. So, um, now, what else is there here? Well, here's obviously where we have to send it to. This is the billing details and this is the shipping details. The billing details might be different from the shipping details. Um, this would be in the case that they actually want it sent to somewhere else. Uh, what else have we got here? Now we've got tax, so we can change the tax. In, this, in the case of this site, there is no tax involved. Um, so we can change the order total, we can change the shipping, we can change the tax. We can change pretty much whatever we want. Now down here, I was actually playing around Excuse me. I was playing around with this order earlier, um, and so this is why you can see a few different notifications here. Um, what will happen is if you start at the bottom, it'll tell you what changes you have made, what things you have actually done to this order to get it back to where it was, you know, to get it to the point where it is now. You can also add your own, you know, whatever you want to put in notes, okay? And it can be a customer note or it can be a private note. And a customer note will be included with any emails that go out to your customer and a private note will just stay within, um, within WooCommerce, within your system. When you are happy that you've made any changes you want to make, and probably the most common one would be you'd change it to processing or completed, you will click on save order and that will mean that an email is sent out to your customer. Okay. Now let me show you what these emails look like. I'll go back to my Gmail here. That is what is sent out if you just click on this email invoice. Okay. So that just sends out a summary of what's been ordered. There's a couple of others I did here earlier. Um, this one says that the order was received. So this is what you get when it's been changed to processing. Okay, so it's just got all the details. Now, of course, if you've put in the shipping, it'll update the shipping and it'll update the order for you, the order total for you. Okay. And then when the order is complete, it'll say the order is complete and again it sends out what was ordered and how much and where it's being shipped to and stuff like that so that gives you some idea now if you want to customize the way these things look the way these emails look um, I'll just briefly show you where you go you go to WooCommerce and go to settings and then over on the very right hand side you'll see a tab that says emails and you can actually change some of the you know the layout and the colors and you can put up a, a heading in there and that sort of thing so you can change those if you want or if you want a hand with that then let me know and I'll give you a hand with it so you can customize those email, emails now the other thing that you might be wanting to do is if you are keeping track of your stock levels you will probably want to click on this reduce stock button so that that will mean that 
you know, in this case, one thinking cap product will be taken off the quantity available um, for that particular product. So that's that way you can keep track of all your stock levels and keep them up to date. Um, it, with the old system, when you change the status from pending to processing, it would reduce that reduce the stock for you automatically. In the case of this system, I don't think it does. I've tried to do it and it didn't do it. Um, I needed to click on the reduce stock in order for it to you know actually you know reduce the stock. If somebody does a return or cancels or something like that, then you can um, click on restore stock to effectively put that product or products back into your stock levels. Now one thing that you don't see within this system is whether somebody has actually paid you. So you still need to go to PayPal or to Mails or whatever it is that you're using for your payment and just check that you actually got the money. Okay. Um, sometimes people will come to your website and will fill out the form and buy the things and then when it actually comes to paying you they don't go ahead with it either because they think oh my goodness I don't have enough money in the bank or don't have enough money in PayPal or I can't find my credit card number something along those lines. So it may be that you've got an order sitting in WooCommerce and you know, sorry in your you know your WordPress site but you don't have a matching payment in either um, you know PayPal or Mails or whatever it is. Um, you would then I would be recommending that you contact the person just by email or by phone depending on where you are and where they are and how you feel about that and maybe just say thank you very much for your interest in our product thinking cap or whatever the product was um, but I'm, I'm afraid I didn't receive any payment from you. Um, do you still want to go ahead with it? Was there a problem? Would you like me to ring you? So just be friendly and point out to them that you know, you're know you aware that they were there and that you know you just wanted to know if you can be of assistance. Now how you do it's completely up to you. That's how I would do it. If it's a really really small order you might not bother. If it's a big order then it's probably worth your while to do so. If you email them probably about half the time they won't bother emailing you back you know they might be embarrassed to say oh look I'm sorry I couldn't afford it or whatever so but it's still worthwhile you know getting in touch with them now one last thing you'll see up here there's a button that says add order how cool is that um, somebody asked me the other day they said well what if I get an order over the phone and I want to still include that in you know in my system so what you would need to do well, let's just click on add order and see what's going to happen there what you'll need to do is first of all you're going to need to add them as a customer okay because here you need to enter who the customer actually is so the and it's, that's why it says no billing address and no shipping address and so forth so in order to add somebody as a customer there's one little quirk here a customer is actually called a user so you go to users and you go to add new and you put in the details I shall just click on that and show you so you need to put in that person's details. So you'll need to put in, you'll need to ask them on the phone um, for their um, user, for their email address. Okay, um, you will probably give them a username as well. So you know you can use the same, you can you know you can use their email address as the username. The role will be customer. Okay, now um, and I would recommend that you tick this to say add the user without sending them a confirmation email. Um, you know it's up to you how you do that but some people might think well what's this they don't really understand what it is that they've just signed up for without you know knowing it so you can do that so then once you've added them as a customer you can then go back to orders so we go back to the orders screen and we click on add order and then you'll basically be able to fill out all the order details what it is that they want um, you know you, you'll, you'll use this when you need it okay then you can go save order email the invoice so you can pretend to be them and you can enter all this information so you can put in the billing details the shipping details um, we can just put it in put them in as a guest if that's been set up for you within your settings if you can do that um, you know so you can put in all these details if you don't want to register them as, as a user then you need to allow guest uh, registration so if you're not not sure how to do that and that's not set up for you then get back to me and I'll show you how to set that up. So that's how you can do it. You can do all these different things with your order. Um, if you have special requirements like for example if you've got downloadable products, if you need 
PayPal to tell you when things have been paid for, that sort of thing. Get back to me. Um, as I said, this is the real basic stuff uh, and the slightly more complex situations You know, for some of my clients. I'll do separate videos for you. Okay, thanks. Bye.